Hi, welcome back to our channel. My name is Jolie, and today we're going to be reading from Each Day New Beginning, October 23rd. So I'm really grateful that you're here with me so that we can read together and um, go ahead and get started. Um, these start off with a quote, and um, today's quote is from May Sarton, and it says, Words are more powerful than perhaps anyone suspects, and once deeply engraved in a child's mind, they are not easily eradicated. So how burdened we became when, as children, with labels applied by parents, teachers, even school chums. We believe about ourselves what others teach us to believe. The messages aren't always overt, but even the very subtle ones are etched in our minds and they remind us of our shortcomings long into adulthood. Try as we might to forget the, the criticisms or the if we try to forget the names, they linger in our memories and influence our self-perceptions as adults. The intervening years have done little to erase whatever emotional scars we acquired as children. Our partnership with God will help us understand that we are spiritual beings with a wonderful purpose in this life. And we are as lovely and capable and successful as we perceive ourselves to be. Our own thoughts and our own words, our own labels can become as powerful as those of our youth. It takes practice to believe in ourselves, but we can break the past's hold on us. So my higher power will help me know the real me. I am all that I ever needed to be. I am special and I will come to believe that. So what I wrote here is as an adult, do I project my unconscious and subconscious thoughts onto others? Like, as an adult, do I project my unconscious and subconscious thoughts onto others? Like those deep, communicated beliefs that I, like, planted the seeds inside of me. It's almost like, that's why I want to be responsible for what I say. And, uh... Because I, I see I see my words uh, as uh, wild wild seeds that just like go out and then they grow into whomever they hit like however like whatever soil is there whoever pe you know whatever people are able to hear that communication just like the things that you you know, like, like I give an example, like, um, like the media and what they communicate. And we have a choice. We have so many choices of what media to listen to or to watch. I mean, they, when I was growing up, there was like only three channels, um, now, and then like eventually more and more channels came up, you know, where there's news, uh, there's, local and um and nationwide and now we can hear um all the different ones uh for i mean now like it's it's broadened so far so we have all these perceptions that we can uh that that are available um so i was thinking about that today because 
the different perceptions of what's going on in in the world uh, today. This is I'm recording this in 2023. So um, there are different media sources and different places and people who are living in certain parts of the world that are um, suffering, great deal of suffering, and who have suffered for a long time. And um, not just in the places that they're talking about specifically now, um, but in other parts of the world that we may not even have any coverage from, you know, or um, a way to see that, or maybe, um, you know, I know that uh, there's choices by the media that shows up like on my newsfeed um, based off of what is filtered to me, you know? So I'm, I'm just curious about all that. Like, like never before have, um, have um, we been able to see so many different perceptions and awarenesses of that. So then it filters in through our belief system of what we're okay with listening to and what we're not okay listening to. And so for me, I, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, and what do I have to do with any of it um, other than to empathize and have compassion for um for all those who are involved. And um, yeah, I surrender to loss to gain serenity. God is more powerful than my plans. And for what I want, um, I am an instigator of my own chaos. I take responsibility for that. I am taking responsibility for the for the things that I say and um, keeping it as general as possible because I, I don't, you know, I don't think that that's um, my place. So I know that I'm powerless over so many things in my personal life and worrying only takes uh, my day down you know, stuff will happen regardless if I want it to or not. Um, what can I do? I can just be um, uh, be as present as I can with my scenario day, with the people that I interact with and um, have respect for uh, everyone. Um, regardless, and uh, human rights for all as well. I, my stand is human rights for all. And um, uh, yeah, so with that said, let's go ahead and say the serenity prayer. I love you very much. Um, what, uh, what comes up for you with all this? Um, with the reading and um, you know the reading is words are more powerful than perhaps anyone suspects and once deep the deep engravement uh, in a child's mind or you know um, I was thinking about like how how immature even an elderly person can be we I've I if we if like, for instance, if I didn't take responsibility for what I say and how I think and take responsibility for my own emotions and the, and, uh, then I'm being immature. Like if I'm saying things to my kids that are like, oh, guess what? Your dad and I are getting a divorce. Have a good day at school. Like my kids said Mom, do you remember when you did that? And I'm like, oh my God, I am 
I am so sorry that that happened. Like I was an immature parent and um, I'm not that person anymore. And I really am sorry, you know, um, I'm going to, you know, let's, that's not okay to do. You know, I just want you to, to know that I acknowledge that and I'm really sorry. Like, um, and I'm not expecting them to forgive me. I just, I just, I want to acknowledge that um, that happened and not um, take defense like, well, you know, I mean, the other, the person who told them that stuff when they were little uh, and it happened is, uh, would have said, because she's still there. Oh, well, just get over it. It's in the past. Can't you just like move on? I feel compassion for my kids and for what my responsibility was for the words that I said and how, you know, like how it went. Like the same with, uh, you know, I, I suppose I hold um, others accountable then mm -hmm. for that as well of how they act mm -hmm. and say, but I also know that I can't expect others in my family or um, people I work with or people in the media or whatever, or customers, I mean, just anybody in general to act the way I now, because I'm going through my recovery, that they should act the same way. When I first started recovery, I was, I couldn't bear being around anybody who wasn't responsible with their talking. And that's my righteousness. And I've, I've soon, as of to this moment, had this realization from doing the fourth step, because this is the 12 step program um, that I'm working with and um, that I have compassion for those who are not there. I don't necessarily spend much time with them uh, but I able to now where um, I didn't have much tolerance. Does that make sense? There was less tolerance. And so um, it's a, it's, it's progress, not perfection, but I'm able to recognize the difference between me then when I, when I was irresponsible to me when I first got into recovery where I was judgmental because I was judging myself first and foremost and then others as a reflection of that. And that's where I think I wrote this here. As an adult, do I, do I project my unconscious and subconscious thoughts on others? Like the children, like, you know, when I expect things that they, I expect them to be more of a mature person than me. Like, is what I'm so, because I, sh because I'm their mom, that they should know? No. So I'm just, um, I'm grateful that I'm, I'm working on myself because that's all I can do. I can only work on this, my maturity. Because I see there's, uh, I see that in the media, for instance, because it's what I've been seeing is how they're reporting, how they report things, is the catastrophizing, keeping us away and at a distance from God by catastrophizing, by making things and instigating chaos and um, um, causing worry and depression uh, with how they're reporting and how people talk about certain things. Um, 
and yeah i mean i know that that's that's gossipy interest and it keeps things like eating at each other and i just um i feel that that's very immature and as a as a human race the immaturity of that is I just feel like that's that's where that distorted thinking is incessant in most I don't want to say most in a lot of uh and a lot of that um so I think that that's where it's just like it you know, sewing it in, sewing it in the sickness, keeping it sick. And um, anyway, that's all I have to say about it. Um, let's say the serenity prayer, you know, so it's important um, to, for me to just say that, because I was, that's something that I was thinking about when I was on my way to work today. I was like, oh, this is like, there's like that immaturity that goes through. And I, it's like without like you know what does that mean you're immature i think it's just like um not wise yeah so anyhow god grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change we cannot change other people places things we can't change their actions we can't change their perceptions Maybe certain things can, um, but that's a choice, right? To have uh, courage, to change the things we can. That's ourselves, our attitudes, our actions, our perceptions, and wisdom to know the difference. Let's be present here with each other and just take a nice deep breath in and out and pray for the sick and suffering. Bless them, change us. And um, I'll go ahead and just pull a card. I'll shuffle the cards. And um, you know, this is like a funny t-shirt. My kids uh, hand me down from them. But I was like, they're like, mom, that t-shirt is so funny. I'm like, I know. But it's, it's comfy. It's kind of chilly out. It was rainy. And um, yeah, had a had a nice time with my kids tonight. We um, when I got home, we had um, dinner, and they showed me some videos, and they like to show me the stuff that they watch during the day. What did I even watch? I was watching. Oh, there's this one ironically because i'm sober which is funny my daughter she um she likes this one uh youtuber i can't remember his name but he mixes these drink he mixes drinks right i'm sober and i'm watching a uh, drink mixing but he he gets like recipes from people and he mixes them and they're just like they're somewhat disgusting but i can remember how some of these liquors taste and I just get like I'm like I start burping in my shirt because I'm like oh that sounds disgusting <laughs> I remember that my daughter um yeah so we watched that which is funny it's just funny and um it's it's like uh then I don't need to do it I'm grateful that I'm sober it helps it helps that presence so that I can be present and sane and responsible. You know, I heard alcohol is like really bad for your brain. So anyhow, we got the magician card today. So the magician card is, it's, it's number one, but zero is the first card, which is the fool who's onward to the journey. And the magician is the second card in the deck. 
And um, here he has all the tools. So we have all the tools and I mean, he's worldly. He has his red outfit on, he's clothed, not like the fool when he's off on his journey. He's like, you know what? Just gonna wear the shirt on my back and I'm on my way. And here the magician has made a way for himself how he's going to actually uh, make a living or he's going to use his tools. And um, it reminds me of like the second house where it's like um, uh, in astrology. So I do readings. If you're interested, that's uh, just email me. It's in the description below, but um, this is like second house. It reminds me of um, Taurus because he has all the worldly things, his hat, he's, you know, ready to do this. You know, he's got all the stuff, just like we do. We have the tools. We just have to work with them and it takes time and that's okay. It's just one day at a time. Okay. So we use the tools that we have. He looks like he's like, you know, he's a very serious faced here, but, and then, you know, being present, but he's looking towards the past a bit, like, just like. What can I learn? What am I doing? He's looking behind, you know, like he's revert. He's not looking towards the future. He's looking kind of like off, like, all right, I got, I have to learn this stuff. You know, like when you're studying something and you're kind of like, I missed half of it because I'm like thinking in my own head. So, I mean, there's the edge here. So that can be a problem if you overuse the tools, if you like think that that's it, that's all I have to do now. You know, we have to turn it around so he can be present, right? So that's, that's where I'm at with that card. All right, mm -hmm. I love you. And I will see you God willing tomorrow with the next day's reading. All right. So, um, like subscribe and, um, share this content with someone who may benefit and, um, hold it, hold your, um, heart. Love you.